chairpersons and thank you Dr. Bansi for inviting me and giving me a topic and make me read like a student for the last five days. I enjoyed it and always say Guru Deva Bhava is one more guru who's given me a topic which I think people thought about it a lot and forgot about it and said where is leptin? We, we spoke about it. What does leptin mean? I picked this uh, topic because there's a recent article which says known and unknown history of leptin the last 30 years and why didn't we progress in leptin research the last 30 years. I'll try and see if I can make it simple and make the story interesting. Let me try. I don't have any conflict of interest for this talk. 30 years the story is 1994 in a lab called Jackson Lab somewhere in the United States. Just found out that a hormone called leptin which when it is in excess causes weight loss. Fantastic. What is leptin? Leptin in from a Greek mythology or Greek term said tin. Everybody was excited. So let's give leptin to everybody who's obese and we're going to lose weight. That was not the story. And let's see how leptin works. I'm going to uh, convey my talk in leptin and its role in energy regulation. Just a little bit of pathophysiology of leptin, its role in obesity and type 2 diabetes. And where are we proceeding ahead? Does leptin have something left so that if we combine with something, it can cause weight loss? This is what it is. It's a peptide hormone and it's produced by the white cells, white fat cells. That means if you have excess white fat cells, you have more leptin. And what does leptin do? It decreases energy intake. So all this is where it's in the brain. That is why if uh, any of you have flipped through Harrison's obesity and appetite regulation and stimulation, need to know three of the things. One, leptin not only is a hormone which is responsible for energy intake and imbalance, it has various functions on the immune system, on the reproductive system, on energy expenditure, glycemic control, food intake. So such an interesting ha hormone, wh what happened? Are we not doing enough to find out? So what was the reason and how it acts? If you look at two uh, pathways in appetite regulation, it's the hypothalamus. That's why we're not able to lose weight. You come up with any sort of uh, drug in the world, it's only 20% or 30% bariatric surgery. That's very complex mechanism. So there are two appetite stimulation neurons, that is the neuropeptide Y and the agouti related peptide now, and then you have appetite suppressants which are from the POMC and the CART pathway. If you stimulate the neuropeptide Y and the agouti related peptides, your appetite will increase, but if leptin, what it does is, it has an inhibitory mechanism. It inhibits the agouti-related peptide and neuropeptide Y, so your satiety, you feel full through the POMC pathway. And this is why it becomes interesting. And is this the only hormones which are there? Look at it. You have leptin, GLP-1, GIP. That's where they're working now. Everything is in the brain. So. And even leptin is part of it, but we have not progressed much with leptin, uh, leptin because of various reasons, which I will tell you right after this. And all the CCK, PPY, all the vagal efferents. So there's so many hormones which play on the hypothalamus. We're just addressing one of them or half of them and then say, okay, can we get weight loss? Now, what are the peripheral actions of leptin? It's not only having central actions. The peripheral actions are via neurons. It has uh, effect on the brain, liver, muscle, heart, immune cells, pancreas, reproductive system. It was shown that if you, if you don't have leptin, your reproduction also gets down. It's like a starvation. It's like starvation. The first thing which you do is reproduction comes down. Like say, anorexia of nervous of people will have less leptin. Something like that. So fact, what are the factors regulating leptin levels? One is adiposity. You're more obese, you have more leptin. That means you, you, it says that, okay, decrease your appetite. Excessive energy state, if you're overfed, leptin makes sure, yeah, the high levels of leptin. But still, why people fat? Insulin, glucose. So if you're lean, your leptin levels, secretion and expression of leptin is decreased, low energy state, and free fatty acids. So all of these factors, leptin plays an adaptive response. Decrease in fasting, I mean, even when changes in fat mass are not observed. If fast, leptin levels decrease. 
sleep, that is why sleep is important. If you sleep less, that means you become more fat. Is it not? It's one of the hormones. So paradoxically, by physical training, chronically, that's why activity becomes very important. You physically very active, lectin is chronically decreased. So this testosterone, estrogen, what I was talking about, its effect on reproductive health, and all of this is what leptin does. Now, why don't we lose, if you are fat, you have high leptin levels, but why are not losing weight? There's something called leptin resistance. So you need to understand, like insulin resistance, there's leptin resistance. Now, how is this leptin resistance encountered is the story. There is no research, was uh, the recent article from Harvard was saying, there's no leptin available to do research, like a glucose clamp technique, where we found out, okay, hepatic glucose output comes in, though there's insulin resistance, the leptin measurement of leptin resistance is not there. There are not many people who are still producing leptin, though leptin is approved by FDA and available in a commercial form in, for people with leptin deficiency and people with syndromes where le leptin is deficient. So there are two types of re receptors. One is the extracellular and the intracellular receptor. And SOL-R is the circulating form of the leptin receptor, which is measure measurable. So this, through this SOL-R receptor, I won't go too much in detail, through the SOL-R receptor, we can find out how much of leptin is there and what is the resistance to leptin receptor. So this leptin receptor isoforms are present there are many isoforms, but what is measurable is the free leptin index is a mean of assessing state of leptin action and leptin resistance. It's measured by the fraction of total leptin and sole R concentration. If you have more sole R or the receptor through which it acts, that means you're rest, you're, you have less leptin resistance. So, so leptin resistance and resensitization is if you, you develop resistance to leptin if you become obese. Why some people, even if they, they eat too much, are thin? You don't know. You're more sensitive. Like uh, JJ is loving, so he either eats but still is thin. I don't eat, I become more fat. We don't know. Is, is it because of this whole idea? Is it because of leptin? And dietary intervention in certain leptin sensitizers have a positive effect on leptin resensitization. Do, just like insulin resistance, if we lose weight, do we become more leptin sensitive? We don't have answers. Because the, the recent article says we don't have enough leptin production companies to do these type of research. I think in future they will. So on glycemic uh, control, leptin has a glucose lowering effects which are independent of, independent of its regulation to body weight. The mechanism by which leptin regulates blood glucose levels are not fully understood, but may through act through several centrally mediated effects, we are unaware. So left if on food intake and glycemic control, disruption in this in turn may lead to leptin, uh, to lead to di type 2 diabetes. See, leptin, you should understand, works in the brain more than in the periphery. Though I told you it has a lot of peripheral actions, the blood brain permeability to leptin may reduce. You may have a lot of fat cells producing leptin, but if it's not crossing the blood-brain barrier, and if there's insufficient leptin signaling in the hypothalamus, you have hyperglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, and type 2 diabetes. So leptin resistance in the individual with obesity can lead to type 2 diabetes. Like obese people, leptin, you can have, like insulin resistance, leptin resistance. Now, how does it have? I won't go here. I'll just go uh, to this slide. Looking at, if you have normal body weight, look at the number of, if you're obese, you have more leptin. But this soul R receptor, which I was telling, very important for sensitivity of leptin, even though you're lean, you have less leptin, but you have more receptors through which you can act. Here, you have less receptors. So that is why you have leptin resistance. Increased levels of leptin and reduced SOLR levels are associated with leptin resistance. And this resistance, similar to insulin resistance, can cause type 2 diabetes. So the evidence of SOLAR as a biomarker for leptin sensitivity is if you can measure this, as I and also told you about free leptin index, like how uh, we have all the home IR and so on for 
insulin resistance, I think at some point of time, after another five years, all we'll be talking about leptin resistance. I'm not sure where this research is going, but there are some things which say that increasing solar levels accompanied by concurrent decrease in leptin indicates improved leptin sensitivity and weight loss. All across the world, there's only one thing, weight loss, weight loss, and how many drugs you can develop for weight loss. I think last 30 years, they missed somewhere that we don't have enough of. This is a cartoon, uh, cartoon representation of leptin action balance between leptin and the OBR or the OB receptor gene. So you have leptin, you have leptin from the cells, goes and stimulates the pancreas, but uh, hypothalamus, sorry, and if you, these are the solar receptors, they bind with the leptin, and if you don't have many solar receptors, how can we increase the solar re receptors? Leptin in action is a balance between leptin and the OBR receptor and the soul. So what happens is if you can increase these receptors, can we increase these receptors? Yes, they found a way, but if you combine it with amylin, the leptin responsiveness increases and the receptors increase, so effect of leptin kicks in and probably you may have weight loss. So solar is the extra circulating extracellular part of OBR and hypothesized to be a biomarker of leptin action. So uh, if you give amylin, what happens is the solar or the optimum leptin responsiveness, rep, the, there's decrease in leptin resistance and you can increase the solar receptors. So whatever leptin is in the body can act better. Or do we combine leptin with uh, amylin and see if you can increase this solar. And that's the research which is in progress. There are a couple of drugs in the pipeline and this action may be promising and uh, may be promising in the future. Amylin has been proposed to be a leptin synthesizer. As I told you earlier, it's not one hormone. It's not GIP, it's not GLP, it's amylin, it's the uh, pathways, the agote related peptide, the neuropeptide Y, the POMC path, pathway, the CART pathway, and all these stimulants and suppressants which work towards weight loss or weight gain. So I think it's a holistic approach and it's still the brain. It's not the gut. It may have the receiving signals from everybody. Like insulin resistance, leptin resistance is what is preventing research on leptins and what they say in conclusion, we have this, just a touch of a topic leptin forgotten, not spoken, like me, I also uh, well, they were brought up five days before, said the Bansi is given the top to leptin, what do I do? And then started reading up everything on leptin, pulled up the old Williams endocrinology textbook and said, oh my goodness, I need to again go into cellular and molecular levels. Thank you, Bansi, and uh, it's like learning. So leptin role in energy and regulation, a brief shot, we still have not understood the full mechanism of leptin action. The sensitivity only now, it is working through three other pathways. We're going, going to confuse you and talk about all the cellular levels. Please remember, all of us have leptin. Each one, like insulin and leptin resistance, is there. We don't have much research on leptin resistance. It is responsible for obesity and type 2 diabetes. Probably combination of all these hormones. Probably we have a drug, GIP, GLP, leptin, uh, amylin, all mixed together as a short for obesity. You know, that's my thinking, maybe far-fetched. So why 30 years of leptin discovered in 1994? Congenitally, it can be in 1999. It was, if, if you have leptin deficiency, there's certain syndromes with leptin deficiency, and if you can give it, it was found to be uh, effective. Leptin resistance in 2008, and the, literally the research on leptin started falling down when they found that by giving leptin can we cause weight loss. It is very useful and also approved for by FDA in leptin in lipodystrophy, especially metabolic dysfunction in lipodystrophies. Metrileptin is FDA approved in 2014. It is the first approved leptin-based therapy. Not many, only three companies were manufacturing it and all two uh, of them have already stopped manufacturing leptin. So to acquire leptin is a big problem now. So leptin and metabolic syndrome in 2015. Inflammation, its role in inflammation in 2010. Leptin and amyline 
combina in combination. 2007, still we are not understanding why it could be a multi-hormone therapy for obesity. That's what I was trying to hint at. And leptin for hypothalamic amenorrhea is approved and they use it, it restored menstrual cycles and hormone levels. It may have some effect on reproductive health. Future direction of leptin therapy, I, I all, as I told you, and my take is probably you have, a, uh, have an injection with all the peptides put in. So we stop, and they stop doing any more oral drugs for, for um, long-term control, is it not? It's only injectables which are going to be available. So <laughs> this is where we are. It's all peptides, probably a combination of all of them may have some future. And I rest my case here. So we have 30 years of leptin and the challenges are there and we know, know still and we need to, I think, understand more. And it's very difficult to have a target at the hypothalamus to do research on anything which has effects on the hypothalamus. Even in rats, it's very difficult to find out until the peripheral target is very well known. So that is why research in hypothalamic regulated peptides, hormones for obesity is not very, very, um, what do you say, mm, productive. Probably then we have to find ways how we can measure these hypothalamic peptides which regulate obesity. Thank you very much.